I think any sort of art has a bit of strong healing power. Because it's a space where people can come together and, you know, um, like play together. It's a tiny revolution in and of itself. It's a, it's a tiny way of doing things differently. It's not just a party and it's not just a group of people coming together at that time. But how does that continue? So how do you make that ideology grow? Everyone needs a good party, you know, everyone needs a space where they can do that. Even though some people think that's all we are, I think that's just the bit that you see. And then once you come, yeah, you start to see the other stuff and you realise that this is a little bit like the leaflet drop through people's letterbox of saying, do you remember us? If you want to come down and see this and you feel akin to us in any way, then, you know, join us. This building, we'd done work here before, so when they heard that it was closing down, I think it seemed like a great opportunity to just come in here and squirt. When you squat, you're not sitting down and settling in. To squat is, by its nature, a position of work because you're fighting against gravity and therefore you have to be aware of your posture. However, it can be a place of relaxation and meditation if you work for it. The funny thing is though, is that for most of the world, squatting is not an unnatural position. For most of the global south, people use this position to eat and to shit on a daily basis. In the west, we've got a bit comfortable. We've got our central heating, we've got our houses, and we've got many other luxuries which are not afforded to most of the world and we forgot how to squat. You have to be ready to move at any point. This is a position of mobility, not a position of comfortability. It's about cooperation and how you actually work together and it not become a hierarchy where the loudest voice gets the say and determines what happens. The social life that you have when, when you're squatting just makes like a massive difference from where you're not squirting. Outside of like the practical, obviously, of having somewhere to live, I think it is about showing that we can live differently. The only thing that protects us legally is the fact that we have a section 144, a legal notice of occupation, sellotaped to the window. Without a section 144, some sellotape, some locks, some tools to be able to barricade the doors effectively, and a community of people who are willing to work and live together, then we put ourselves at immediate risk of physical harm. Normally we move every one to three months, depending on the nature of the building, and we work with empty buildings that have no immediate use, and we try to establish communities, and we try to open those doors to the public because there is no longer social context being provided by the council. So as a squatting community, we try to provide it. It's not like squatting is the answer to some of the issues that we 
we actively want to activise on. So, you know, Scotland's not going to sort out the economy. Scotland's not going to sort out the way in which we run our governments. It's not going to sort out the homeless problem. Um, and it's not going to sort out community art-based spaces. But what it does do is it highlights it. And so if people can use that as a tool, Involvement with the council is always negative, pretty much, in my experience. They don't seem fond of squatters at all. You know you're going to go at some point, particularly in this country. Authorities have a really different attitude towards it. You know, we're always hearing of these like big land squats in Barcelona, in Berlin. And when I was in Germany, there are squats which have been there for fucking 30 years now, and which are established social centres and bars. Um, and here we're still at the point where every few months we're having to move on. We just had some very aggressive individuals attempt to sledgehammer their way through the door and threatened to slit our throats and said that they were the owners of the building. I am asking you who you are. Well, brother, the police are on the way. Someone call the police immediately, right now. Right now, someone call the police. Tell them there's a man kicking his way through the door. Go again. Yeah. Obviously, in relation to the incident earlier on, a crime's gone in, section 4 public order, obviously a uh, fear and provocation of violence. What I have done to protect yourselves, obviously with the vulnerability issue, we've put an urgent response marker on the address. So if you contact us on 999 or 101, I'd obviously recommend 999 if someone's trying to smash the door in. Yeah. Um, it'll be come up, it'll flag up an urgent response marker. So that means for us, somebody will tell us that we've got to make, get down here. Obviously there's some ongoing, so we need to get here yeah. urgently. People call us criminals and they call us thieves for stealing buildings and stealing land. And there's many perceptions about the spaces that we create. But I promise you, if you squat, it's not easy, it's not hard. It's just work. And it's interesting. And when you squat, you realise it's, it's very necessary and very easy to stand up. Because you have a family and you have a community. And you're willing to get beat up every one to three months. Two thousand eighteen will actually be the year where it really starts. Uh, and I think there's a number of us that have done a lot of work in the background on um, creating movements, how you bring these groups together, we're communicating a lot more with each other. I think a lot of the people who are squatting are kind of uh, refining the process at the moment and figuring out how to make it run the smoothest and how to make it like the nicest community for everyone. Um, I'd like to see that process carry on. This type of space is, and as a group, is about trying to bring in as many new people as we can. And even if they only stay for a small short period of time, they can at least they've got the option to take away some of the skills that they learned here, maybe been open to other ideas and possibilities that they've not thought about, and then they can take that back out into seemingly the real world. I think the idea is to try and resist and to try and keep this building for a while. I mean we're squatting like you never know, like who knows what's gonna happen, but I think the idea was that we want to keep hold of this building for a bit. Then in terms of how do we or what do we do with it? So in between resisting and in between living, I think that's up for debate. I think all of us would love it if we could have a space where we could function as a group personally, without all the drama and stresses, be able to keep some order to it and run community-based project events. I think we all want that. To be able to do more in this, using this space, like for creativity workshops, uh, for people to come and join together, uh, to um, support like homelessness or 
GGP. So yeah, it's got. I think this place has got a lot of potential, and I've seen that people are quite on it, on this. So it's probably taking a good way. I mean, like. if not, if we do get kicked out, we'll find another building. The people here need somewhere to live, so there'll be another building after this. That's the nature of squatting, really. You know, you have a building for a month, two months, three months, and then you go crack another one. And if you ever see the international squatting symbol, which is a circle with the arrow going through it, the kinky arrow, that is, I hope, a space for you to rest, to meet interesting people, to share skills and stories. And that symbol is all over Europe, and it's an invitation on the condition that you respect that space, you respect the people in it, and you're prepared in the worst case scenario to move at any point. <laughs>